Hello and welcome to Our Kids, brought to you by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Aaron Carrington, a student at Fern Creek High School. The 2015-2016 school year has started and JCPS students are learning lots of great new things. In this month's show, we'll show you what our kids were up to this summer and take a look back at the first day of school. We'll also have stories from our five-star student correspondents. The first day of school brought hugs, smiles, laughter, and maybe some nerves. Let's take a look at how things went at Butler Traditional High School, Kenwood Elementary, and Ramsey Middle School. We're Butler Traditional High School, and this is one of the schools of District 4, one of the ones that I serve. And I'm real excited that we got a new school year going. Come on, guys, here we go, here we go. Well, this is the kickoff to the 15-16 school year, so lots of excitement. Our students are ready, our educators are ready. Well, good morning, and welcome to Butler High School. I, I just can't tell you how excited it is to be here on the first morning. There's a lot of potential for all of our students to learn this year. I go to Butler High School and I'm a junior and I'm actually excited for the first day. I get to see all my friends and I get to meet all my new teachers. As you progress in the years it gets better. You're, you get to know your teachers more so your teachers like you more and your the, the students stay the same so it just it just is it's funny. We're excited to have the students back today. Uh, we put a lot of work and time in. Our team did to make sure that we're ready to go day one. Everything is about learning. We do have some uh, business to take care of at the beginning, some paperwork to go home to parents. Um, we will be in instructional day and learning will be taking place today at Butler Traditional High School. The first day is about setting the tone for the year. It's about learning, so it's about setting expectations and routines, but it's about learning. So we need our students to attend school regularly and be as prepared and ready every day as they are today. This is first day of school and kindergarten. Great. Why? Because I like school. Well, we are at uh, Bright and Sunshine at Kenwood Elementary, uh, where we're ready to open the first day of school. We've been preparing all summer to make sure that all of our staff members are ready for each of our almost 600 children that will be coming through the doors today. We have 11 buses that come here to Kenwood. Um, all of our tags are already ready to go and so that we can make sure that every child gets home safe. It's very exciting. It, it brings back lots of memories for me for all those years that uh, I had those first days. But uh, this morning it's so intense. Uh, trying to get everyone tagged quickly and welcome them back, but it's it's wonderful because you get a chance to touch each child that you get to tag. So I, I, it's very, uh, it's just very exciting. My favorite thing about school is math. I like woke up and got my um, clothes on and just wake up in the morning since I was so excited. Here at Kenwood we uh, individualize our instruction and try to meet the whole child um, where they're at and take them to where they need to be. So there's real learning from day one, the moment they step on the premises. School starting up is fun but it's also bittersweet for moms because they get old so fast and it's exciting to watch our learning grow. Take a seat anywhere you like ladies and gentlemen. It's been a fantastic opening to the first day of school. Right now we're at the 1030 hour so we're in the middle of transitions from lunch. We also are transitioning to our quest classes which is what we call our related arts and there are regular classes going on so this is the heart of the day when every transition everything that's going on that's possible to go on is going on. Learning starts day one. As a board member you know if you were to look at our materials that we get in a board meeting just one board meeting is about this thick and it's one thing to read that on paper, but it's another thing to be here. I'm very excited that you're on here today. To see it, to feel it, to touch it, to smell it. Everyone is coming in energized, the kids are excited, the students are excited, the parents are excited, so we're having a wonderful, wonderful opening to this school year. The Compassionate Schools Project is a partnership with JCPS, the City of Louisville, and the University of Virginia. The project integrates a health and wellness program at three elementary schools, Cane Run, Jacob, and Slaughter. It is so exciting to be kicking off the Compassionate Schools Project here at Jacob Elementary School. My favorite motto and our favorite motto here at Jacob this year is building a compassionate city one school at a time. Well, you respect others with kindness because you don't like you want to treat others the way you want to be treated. I think compassion means being nice to someone. And I think compassionate means being really nice to someone. I am thrilled 
to announce that Louisville and our Jefferson County public school system will serve as a national site for the Compassionate Schools Project. This is an $11 million health and wellness project that is funded through private donations from enlightened and very generous uh, individuals, companies, and foundations who really believe in the future of you guys. Caring. Caring. So, compassion is when we show that we care for somebody. It's actually a project that will help you reach your full potential and will help you give back to the community. Because it will teach you things like how to be empathetic and it will build within you the capacity to self-regulate and to make appropriate choices. You all are chosen as one of the first three schools in the world, in the history of the world, to ever go through something like this. Southern High School graduate and New York Times best-selling author Katie McGarry stopped by PRP High School to encourage students to follow their dreams and embrace their education. Correspondent Diana Baez brings us the story. A New York Times bestseller, Katie McGeary, recently visited PRP to speak with students about writing fiction for young adults. What if I can be that person who walks into a high school and says, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. This is where I grew up. I went to Southern High School. And I became an author. It was wonderful. Like, I absolutely loved it. Like, she's my favorite author of, like, all time. I was beyond excited. <laughs> um, I thought she was so down to earth. Um, she just really knew how to talk to um, the girls, and um, she just had great advice. Some of the students were selected to eat lunch with the author before she spoke with a bigger group. It was amazing. I mean, I read all four of her books that we hear, we have here at the library. With a larger group, she was obviously able to reach more people. And um, people who didn't want to go, like initially, and I like, kind of forced them to, they thanked me later because even though she's a romance writer, she had really great advice for writers in general. This is PRP correspondent Diana Baez reporting for our kids. We have a lot more stories about our kids coming up. Stay with us. Do you need help providing school clothes for your child? The 15th District PTA Clothing Assistance Program can help provide uniforms and other clothing. Make an appointment with the Family Youth Resource Center at your child's school. Donations of new and gently used uniforms and clothing are also accepted. Call 485-7062 or 485-7450 for more information. The portal is your online link for information about your child's grades, test scores, attendance, career choices, and much, much more. It's a fast and easy way to stay on top of what your child is doing in school. If your child's teacher has set up a virtual classroom, you can log on to JCPS Online and access grades for class assignments or communicate directly with teachers. The Parent Portal offers a convenient way you can stay involved in your child's education. Welcome back. You're watching Our Kids, sponsored by Jefferson County Public Schools. Students kept busy over the summer with sports, camps, and jobs. English as a second language learners spent some time at Jefferson Community Technical College to get help with their future college preparations. Hey, let's get going on this bell ringer. Answer these questions. So we're here at JCTC, Jefferson Community and Technical College, and we are doing a summer program for high school ESL students. This is the next step. Um, they invited me and selected me to come and they help you about college and how to add resumes and how to get financial aid, scholarships. We're just helping them make sure they have the skills they need to apply to college and pay for it. I learned like what I want to be in the future and like how to work with other people. Today they have separated us in two different groups. In high school the teacher takes daily attendance, but in college most of the time... Um, one of them is um, what can you do when you come in, in the United States and know about the rules, how to get a job. Our specific goal is 
is really to help with those college access things. Our main goal is for us to all have resumes that are corrected and look good. It helped me like know a lot of things, like just like help me how to like apply for a financial aid, the FESA. I had to be go to, like apply for a good college. I never like know about this until I come to this program. This program like I have a lot of experiment. It helped me a lot like to prepare for my next step after high school. The whole college system here has so much information for you to know and it's even harder to understand that when you're coming from a country that has a completely different system and if no one's exposing you to it it's going to be extremely confusing to figure out on your own. You will spend more time in the classroom in college, does everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Yes? No. We have the students Think about what they really want in their life, their goals and their dreams. In the future, I want to be a doctor and I want to attend Harvard University. If it's not possible, I want to attend Central College. I want to be a, a pediatrician. Yeah. I just want to be a nurse. It's like one of my dreams to work with people. So this is a project we've done every year. Um, it's one of my favorites. They're called dream collages. We have the students Think about what they really want in their life, their goals and their dreams. I love traveling. I would like love happy, pe healthy people. I want to go like attend University of Louisville. Like I want to have a big house and like a nice car. If they know what they want, then they can start outlining the skills that they have to help achieve that, and then also figuring out what skills they're still going to need to achieve that. It's kind of challenging because like you're trying to like trying to learn a new language, but like. When you're the only person like in the class, I don't like you don't even speak any English. There's nobody helping you. That's kind of a little challenging. And we tell them, you know, no matter what college you go to, you're gonna have to figure out how to get to where you need to go. And you're gonna use a map, and you've got to use your uh, verbal resources and ask questions to do it. So like, don't waste the opportunity, the opportunity that you have. Just like opportunity, the opportunity that you have, just go for it. I mean, just don't waste the opportunity, the time that you have. Fourth and fifth graders at King Elementary spent a week at the Louisville Zoo. They learned about biology, ecology, and zoology. Plus, they got some hands-on experience with the animals. We learned about um, animals like eagles, bears. We looked at the wallabies. We have visited the owls. We have visited the sea lions. I seen a baby kangaroo and how they hop and jump around to get to where they want. What do we got here? This week we have King Elementary here for a whole week and we have a group of about 25 kids that are here and they're here just to experience the zoo. We want to give them the very best zoo experience. Our students have been coming here since Monday and they'll be here through Friday um, and have the experience of working with zookeepers and zoo personnel to care for animals and learn more about animals and uh, some team building as well as they get ready for the upcoming school year. You ever watch the African movies when you hear the birds go <laughs> That's who it is right there, kookaburra. We walk around the whole zoo and we talk about and talk about the animals and observe them and we're going to learn about each animal every day and we're going to see the zoo, the whole zoo by the end of this week. And with nectar cups, we only feed birds when they have landed on someone. We don't want to feed a bird on a rope, a branch, a fence. We want the birds to come to a person to get their food. A lot of the animals at the zoo are on the other side of a cage, but golly, just to be in the same space as an animal and have it land on them and get to feed it and have that interaction with an animal, just to see their eyes light up, there's just no better way to connect kids to nature. They come down and you see, you put your hand out and they come and they feed, like you give them food. We're just constantly trying to look for ways to give our students access and exposure to every possible opportunity they can have. Typically you have students that go home and they um, and they read and they you know participate in activities or they might go to some camps through some various sites but this is just another opportunity for them to get some exposure. This is really my first time going to the zoo and I really wanted to learn about animals. It's really amazing. They're doing things like making food for the bears, making food for the animals, learning the difference between mammals, and fish and birds and amphibians. And then they can take that back to the classroom and hopefully build upon those science skills as they go through the year. It's been exciting because I, I love to learn. So. It's very fun hanging out with friends from school and learning about animals. 
if you're like, if you're interested in what their habitats and stuff like that. If you're in science and your teacher asks you about like an animal, you will be prepared and ready to answer the question. These kids are so excited to be here and it's so fun to see them light up. A lot of them even just to do really basic things like walk around the zoo and see the animals and hear the animals. They're just so excited to have this really sort of sensory experience. Kids love school, you know, despite what some people may think. So anytime they're involved with school activities, um, it's exciting. They get to see friends that they might not see over the summer. Let's go back through the gate. It has the kids just thinking about school again instead of something fun, that um, some people that. may dread. It's, it's more of, okay, I'm getting into the flow. So as they come oh, in on the first okay. day, they're kind of ready to go because they've already uh, been okay, doing some activities. Okay, we have to wait for the attendant to let us out. Incoming kindergartners got a step up by attending camp at some of our early childhood education sites. The experience allowed the students a chance to practice skills they'll need for their elementary school journey. Let's go! It's a kindergarten readiness camp and the purpose of it is to provide that extra boost in the summer to make sure those children are ready for kindergarten. Some kids show up three years behind other kids when they're at the age of six. We understand what readiness means. Early childhood readiness at the kindergarten level means high school graduation rates that have students ready for college. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I'm not doing this week before I fight. Yeah, I'm in the way to kindergarten. This camp focuses on the whole child. So we don't just focus on ABCs or 123s. We focus on an all-encompassing approach to it uh, because we, we designed it in a way that meets the child's whole needs. So the curriculum that was developed specifically for the kindergarten camp program had that in mind. That was really cool. We've seen the results from the first two years, and children who participate in these camps enter school ready to accelerate their learning, and that's really important that kids start off their academic careers being ready. What's that spell? From the moment the children get here at 9 a.m. until they leave at 2.30, we've organized the schedule to where every second, even when the children are walking to the cafeteria to get their lunch, they're doing learning activities with the children. We have. We're not wasting a single second. When you start school ready and then you're on grade level at third grade, you're much more successful in middle school and high school and on through down the line. And what that means is in the end we're talking about economic development and having a well-educated workforce and a vibrant community. You see a buzz and excitement going on in the classrooms throughout the day. I'm ready for kindergarten. We have more great stories about JCPS students. Stay tuned. The portal is your online link to information about your child's grades, test scores, attendance, career choices, and much, much more. It's a fast and easy way to stay on top of what your child is doing in school. If your child's teacher has set up a virtual classroom, you can log on to JCPS online and access grades for class assignments or communicate directly with teachers. The Parent Portal offers a convenient way you can stay involved in your child's education. Both my parents have diabetes. Students really think that they are sort of invincible right now, and it's something that they'll think about in the future. I think that it's the actions and the decisions that we make right now that will really help us in the future and that will uh, determine whether we get diabetes or not. Hey kids, get out there, live a great life, but at the same time, get to know the risk factors for diabetes and live a healthy lifestyle. Welcome back, you're watching Our Kids, sponsored by the Jefferson County Public Schools. I'm Fern Creek correspondent, Aaron Carrington. Knight Middle School students received a generous donation to help put them on the path to technological proficiency. The school is now using 15 iPads that have been implemented into classroom lessons. Two, count, measure three, go, and. One, and two, and three, four. Uh, make sure you input that on your iPad. We're using the iPads for app testing. We've been uh, learning how to read and write uh, music. With the iPads in there, we were composing music and we had to read it to 
actually play it right. Ready and go. Yeah. There's been a fantastic example of uh, corporate citizenship here today by Gazelle, who donated 100 iPads to JCPS. So we've been able to see them being put to use in some extraordinary examples of learning here that wouldn't have taken place without great corporate uh, philanthropists like Gazelle. Two, measure four, air, go. One and two. It's the mayor that inspired us because they've been so welcoming to us. You know, we arrived two years ago and it's been a wonderful experience. We're always looking for ways to help the community. This is a school that is working to improve and is moving and improving and we're really proud of their success, but this gives them a boost. One of the students said to me, she just couldn't think of going to any other middle school than Knight Middle School. So we appreciate the generosity of Gazelle and the 100 iPads. That's what makes students feel like School is fun and they want to be here. Makes Phil more advanced than most schools because most schools don't get all that stuff that we do. Some people can barely even afford one iPad. Some families can't even get phones and things, but you know, pretty fortunate that we get to get that stuff donated to us. This is an opportunity for every company in the city to say, how can I make a difference? How can I help kids learn more in JCPS? It might be donating 100 iPads like Gazelle did, or it could be something else that your company does. One E and a two and three E and a four. Not only is it helping them with music, which is related to achievement, but also with reading, and that's fantastic. You know, we have all these iPads, and we sell iPads, we buy iPads, and we're buying other devices. But to see them in the hands of students who actually get to use them and enjoy them, it really is a wonderful thing to see this morning. Lead to Feed is a leadership program teaching students to become passionate, service-minded leaders. Doss High School won a $20,000 technology package grand prize and Kentucky Refugee Ministries received $25,000 for the work that Doss students did on behalf of Syrian refugees. Seneca High School and Johnson Traditional Middle were also national winners. There was many refugees that were about to come to Louisville, so our mission was pretty simple and our focus was pretty straightforward. And that is, all of these ESL kids wanted to feed those Syrians on their first day. Realizing at the same time, most of these kids remember their first day in America because somebody had to feed them on their first day in America. As an international student that I lived in multiple countries, uh, and I, I really experienced this. Uh, and I've seen a lots of people who don't, ha who don't have homes, they're homeless, they don't have food, uh, uh, they're on, sleeping on the street. I've seen those all and it's really uh, uh, makes me, like, made me to do this program and help them. These students were focused. Um, they raised money for a field trip, they collected food, cooked and prepared meals at the Lord's Kitchen. So not only did they just collect food, they went and served and prepared and saw the face of hunger. I'm in ROTC also, and in ROTC you have to have a certain amount of community service hours. So I decided I'm going to join the club, get these hours, and then leave. But once I joined the club, I decided I wanted to stay. I knew I wanted to do something in my community because when I was little, I there were nights when I wouldn't be able to eat and there were nights when I actually needed help, so I felt like I just had to give back. For other people who aren't in community service clubs, I feel like they, they have to give back. I mean, because there's people helping you every day, like kids that eat free lunch. There's someone that pays taxes every day so that you can eat your free lunch. So you, it's only right if you give back. Amazing, like we didn't picture this to happen. Like we feel important, like we helped them a lot. Like to imagine like uh, the hungry people, like their face when they see the food, like that warms our heart. Like, we just wanted to help people. We didn't want like recognition or nothing. We just wanted to help them. So it's a really big deal to get recognized for it. Everybody should be involved in this. If you want to change our city, our, uh, our community, we not, I mean not just, because one finger can do anything. If we grab our whole finger, we can make the difference. The Fern Creek High School wrestling team took home the state championship last spring. Correspondent Sarah Bibb shows us how they accomplished the impressive feat. JCPS academics are on the rise, but one JCPS school shows that they can take you down in sports as well. Fern Creek High School's wrestling team reached the top at the state championship tournament in Lexington this past spring. The two senior state champions, Cole Dodd and Jorge Vega, led their team to the victory with their breathtaking matches. Senior Cole Dodd won a total of 62 matches and won his last with a snatch single to an outside trip. Jorge Vega won his second state championship by winning 49 matches. 
Fern Creek students and staff welcomed their champions home with a pep rally and applause. Co-captain senior Cole Dodd has been on the wrestling team for his entire high school career and has had support from his teammates. Head coach, Coach Mark Hitchings, really pushed me every day. He made sure I got at least 1% better every day. Uh, he really helped me with how I wrestled. The boys on the team put hard work and dedication into their success. They spent six days a week and three hours a day practicing to make it to the top. Co-captain senior Jorge Vega helped his team win the state title. The first time was exciting and the first time or the second time was like a relief and it was more exciting to see my team win than me. The boys had support from everyone including family, friends and faculty at the school. Coach Josh Tishner helped the students succeed at wrestling and at education. As a team we all came together and put together those points that, that they needed. For our kids, I'm Fern Creek correspondent Sarah Bibb. We have lots of new things happening at JCPS this year. The new Minor Daniels Academy is named after a former JCPS teacher and administrator. We are at Minor Daniels Academy and we are ready for the new year. Uh, we are trying to have the best school in, in the district. I'm very excited. I think that uh, when, you, when, you, when you step into a, a, a situation like this, you have to be mission driven. I'm trying to like recruit people that are mission driven and trying to recruit people that here that wants to do his best for kids and we want we want a safe positive environment and that's uh, that's the people recruiting here a new curriculum at Maupin Elementary blends the traditions of Waldorf education with Kentucky core academic standards the Catalpa model school was one of the schools of innovation winners so this is still Milburn T Maupin Elementary we've are saying that it's a Catalpa model. And what that means is that we're using Waldorf-inspired methods while we're teaching the Common Core Standards. And um, the whole Catalpa proposal was part of the Schools of Innovation grant. So this is our orientation, and wow, I'm just really impressed by the turnout. So we have, that they're coming to meet their teachers, to see their classroom. All right, so you, hold it on, you let the blue come all the way up to halfway. They're also um, dyeing some silk, making some scarves. All of the teachers have a real common unifying training and pedagogy and the way that they think about children and teaching. And so it's really based on teaching children when they're developmentally ready to um, really explore, understand, the content. So the teachers will get the kids, they stay with them, um, they know them as learners, they know them as people, they learn their families, and um, they persevere with them through any kind of challenges that just, you know, our life throws us. And so um, they become a real key partner in their learning. And it's not just for a year and then they're passed on to another teacher, it's there for the long haul. All the teachers here are here because they responded to a call and they want to be here. Everybody here knows what they signed up for and they want to be part of it. Thanks for watching our show. We hope you enjoyed it. You can find full episodes of Our Kids on the JCPS YouTube channel. This is the Fern Creek crew that helped put it all together. And until next time, keep, keep supporting, supporting our, our kids. kids. Yeah. Yeah.